you're wasting our time and we're dying. People have died from this damn water and all you guys can sit up there and just pretend like it's no big deal. After uh, you were pulled aside, as you said, the officer said, maybe I could get you a meeting with Governor Snyder. That then turned into uh, an advisor to the governor. And then uh, in late February 2017, uh, Richard Baird, who uh, was known as kind of Governor Snyder's right hand man, um, mm -hmm. he shows up in your living room with uh, Scott Hippica, who described himself as a former black ops Marine is how it was described to me. Um, with him was a state trooper and also Cheryl Thompson with the state health department. Uh, do you have memory of those people being in your living room? Yes. Yeah. I called it the round table because okay. they all sat at the table with me. Okay. And it was you and, uh, at, my you know, parents, mm -hmm. um, Christina, and basically the government. So okay. They, they were there. And they, uh, what, go ahead. Know, they, they, well, I had, I had seen a doctor. I can't, I can't give the name of the doctor, but I had done a uh, urine analysis. Mm -hmm. So I had some information that I don't think anybody had because you can't just prick a finger and, pulled some blood off somebody's finger and say, you, uh, you're, you're poisoned. You have to like, because it's already been after 30 days, the, the heavy metals and toxins are in your bones or in your organs. They're, they're no longer in your blood stream mm -hmm. unless you're sitting there drinking it constantly and then getting like a, 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 a test that way. But the best way to do it is through your, your urine. And, um, they gave me a pill called DMSA. It's a or it's an oral chelator, and so I took that, and then I and then I, I I peed in a jug for 24 hours, and then sent it to a lab, and then they sent sent me back the the um, all the the heavy metals that were in my urine. Wow. And and um and so then I knew by pairing up with Scott Smith from Water Defense um, that it paired up like almost to the T to what was in the water that he tested, mm -hmm. and that's how I knew that people have got to know this. They have got to know that a doctor like Dr. Mona Hanu Atisha, who's I don't know why she's so scared of using this type of um, medicine to help. I mean, she she was she she was given an award for exposing the lead. Well, what about all the other stuff that's in the blood that was in the water? Why didn't anybody want to talk about that? Like chloroform, acetone, you know, stuff. Chloroform's worse than I mean, I would think chloroform's pretty pretty nasty. I want to I want to make sure we'll get to that in a minute. I want to make sure the audience understands. So, the governor's top advisor Richard Baird is in your living room with these other people: the yeah. the, the state trooper, uh, somebody from the health department, as well mm -hmm. as this former army colonel who introduced himself as, as a former black ops marine, and you guys are talking. You're obviously relaying how sick you are and your wife is sick. Uh, and what did he offer you? Well, he said that he knew that certain words, if you, if you know the right kind of word to say that you can get a lot of things done in a pretty fast manner. And so he called it a pilot program. This was Richard Baird said that. R R yeah. Richard Baird. Yeah. He said that, um, if, and so he thought if, if I picked a, if I could find a doctor that they would be willing to try and get, get things paid for, 
through the pilot, through like a pilot study. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally never received anything like cash or like no payment. Like some people thought, thought I got paid. I never saw any of that stuff. It all went through the office. Mm -hmm. It all went through, through the powers that be, you know, I don't even know where it came from to be quite well, honest. I've actually seen the messages. Uh, it came from the health, the state health department was paying for your treatment, uh, through, uh, you know, handling things with your ex-wife. Uh, and what's interesting to me is the way it was described to you was, and confirm this, because this is what your ex-wife said, they basically told you, well, if, if this treatment, chelation treatment works for you, mm -hmm. then, then great, we'll make it available to more residents in Flint. Is that how they described it? Yeah, that, that's pretty much what they said. And I thought they were going to treat our whole family. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. But then when... Yeah, when everything kind of got, I, I started treatment. And then they came back and said, no, we're just going to do you. If you're, um, if it works for you, then maybe we'll do it for other people. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, this is ridiculous. You know, like <laughs> you're going to wait, you're going to wait five years to two to five years before you, you uh, let people know that this is an option. This should be an option for, for the whole entire city. Right. I mean, it's not just one person. Mm -hmm. And so. And I want to be clear. Uh, they told you and your uh, ex-wife, you guys were married at the time. You can't talk about this to the media and you can't, yeah. you can't talk, you can't say that they were paying for it. <laughs> yeah. That, that was like a big, I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I, I just knew that I needed to get this stuff out of me and they were going to pay for it. And I was kind of like, you know, who wouldn't do it? Mm -hmm. And so I did it, you know, I was like, and to be, to be quite honest with you, had, had this not been done, I mean, I probably wouldn't be here right now. And I just want to describe for the audience so they understand you were having seizures. You were losing uh, your memory where you would be driving and you would forget how to mm -hmm. get to places you used to know how to get to. You had serious cognitive problems um, and a whole lot of other problems uh, because of the water. So like you're saying, you know, you kind of you kind of throw a fit at this town hall. And all of a sudden, a couple of weeks later, the governor's right hand man's in your living room. And they're basically making it seem like we're here to help you and your family. Is, is that correct? Yeah, that's exactly it. Mm -hmm. But you later learn that as because I want you to describe it. Not that you don't have any health problems anymore, but it did improve as you got this treatment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The numbers. <laughs> the numbers are like, like, they're like my mercury level was like through the roof um, because it, it like, well, the, the mercury, I don't even want to explain like the medical side of it, but the numbers were through the roof. And now they're down to like minuscule, like next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And did it, My, did your lead levels go? Your blood lead levels went down as well. Oh yeah, down to like a zero point one. Mm -hmm. So, or zero point zero one, which is <laughs> next to nothing. And my understanding of lead is, you know. After a couple of years, it's very hard to get lead removed from your body. So yeah. the fact that, you know, you start drinking this water like the rest of Flint in 2014 when they switch it mm -hmm. and the state made this treatment available for you. Yeah. Uh, if if they would have made it available for other residents at the time, I'm not a doctor, so I can't speak to it. But for you, at least it helped. Uh, it could have at that time once they started seeing that it was improving in you, the lead levels mm -hmm. were going down in you. Then they should have, then they should have acted. They should have acted right away. They should have seen the numbers are dropping. They should have seen that like, Hey, he's starting to make a little more sense when he talks. Hey, things are looking a little, little more up for Adam. Mind you, I was on five over $500 worth of supplements. Who's got $500 
a month in supplements. To, they don't have, you know, people, we don't have that kind of money. So you got you to gotta buy these supplements. Medicaid, expanded Medicaid doesn't cover the supplements. You can go buy a monster energy drink on, on a bridge card, but, but you can't buy vitamins and, and supplements to, 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 to help fight off a lot. And, and, I mean, they can, they, can, they can match like the vegetable thing, I think is a great thing. But how, how, much, how many vegetables you got to eat to get what, you know, you're, you got, you know, you, there goes my brain. Um, I mean, how, how much you got to eat before you're getting enough, you know, supplement, enough iron or enough um, magnesium or what, what, what have you? How, how much? Uh, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just want to make clear. Did you find it suspicious that he called it a pilot program? Your ex-wife said he said you would be the face of Flint. Is that correct? I had poster child is what he said. Okay. And he pulled me aside. He pulled me aside right before he left. And he goes, he goes, I'm going to make you my lead poster child. We we get this thing taken care of. Wow. And did you find it odd that while he's saying this, he's basically saying, but be quiet about it. Don't talk to anyone about it. Don't talk to the media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he did say that. Did you feel, uh, cause I've known you for a while. I don't know you to be dishonest. Did you feel that he was almost like, all right, this guy's getting too loud. He's getting media attention because your outburst at that town hall got media attention in the Detroit News, the Flint Journal. Did you feel like maybe he was trying to kind of, um, I, I guess, silence you, like, uh, you know, in, in a way? Yeah, to a point, yeah. I, I mean, I, I didn't, I guess at the time I was just thinking, man, I got to get better. Yeah, of course. Um, I want to get my job back. I want to, you know, start providing for my family. I mean, yeah. Because but, I don't, I, I don't want people to think that you knowingly, uh, like, I don't think you or your wife felt like, oh, this is dirty or. or no, or, I didn't think that. Right. I just, I, when he said pilot, I didn't think bullshit. Mm-hmm. Excuse my language. No problem. <laughs> I thought, um, I thought this guy really wanted to help me. Right. And your wife, your ex-wife described that he also said, I'm going to go talk to my best friend about this, Governor Snyder. Do you yeah, remember? it was best, a best friend. Yeah. Governor Snyder was like an old friend of his. So... He did say, I'm going to go talk to Governor Snyder about this quote unquote pilot program. Yeah, whether he did, I have no idea. Of course. So were you, were you I want to get to the actual treatment and, and what you went through, but were you aware that he was talking, he had conversations with other residents, not specifically about the treatment you got, but were basically other residents who had kind of been loud and, and was protesting publicly did you ever know at that time that he was talking to other residents and offering them certain things? No, 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 no. I never. No. Does that you don't hear about that kind of stuff? Does that surprise you years later that he he was kind of going around Flint allegedly uh, offering other residents special deals, but not the rest no. of Flint? No. And I I thought, Nate, man, is there anybody else out there? You know, getting what I'm getting, mm-hmm. you know, is, is there anybody else? And I asked around, but I, you know, there was, there's nobody that I, you know, could find. And let me ask you, you know, you're a smart guy. Uh, obviously you have brain impairment, like so many residents in Flint, including children. I mean, lead and other uh, toxins really mess up your brain, but you're a smart guy. When you look back, I mean, this is three years after he was in your living room. Do you, do you feel like you were manipulated? Like he tried to kind of put out a fire, which was you and other residents getting this attention? Mm. I didn't know what his, uh, what, I just wasn't thinking about that. Right. I was just thinking about getting better. No, I, I understand. I'm asking somebody, years, years later, what do you think? Oh, I believe that he was, he had, he had, he had, you know, he thought that this would get 
would save his day, you know, kind of. Yeah. Like, make, you know, people do things nice to kind of justify their crimes or justify their, their, I don't know if I'm making sense. In a way, it sounds like you're saying this would uh, kind of limit the damage, I guess, to the administration. Yeah, yeah I think so. And uh, let's talk about the chelation treatment. You know, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not obviously, uh, I can't advocate for it, but I can say it was extremely painful for you during the process because they're literally extracting lead and other heavy metals from your body. Yeah, that was uh, quite the painful experience. Um, Sorry, I'm like shaking a little bit right now. No problem. Uh, Bear with me. Um, Yeah, I mean, it was like the first, I don't know, I would say, year and a half it was pretty painful sometimes you feel like you had the flu and it was like every day um there's times i couldn't even hold a a spoon to feed my feed my boy um i i couldn't uh i couldn't yeah there's times i couldn't even you know really lift a pencil to write something like write a number down mm-hmm. um, because I was so weak and the pain because your bones would you feel like it would just be removing the stuff from your bones you get like chronic pain throughout your whole entire body can you lift yeah. the can you lift the phone your head a little there you go yeah mm-hmm. it was it was difficult to to do much um, and when did you notice during this process that your symptoms were getting better, the seizures were improving and, and things like that? About it, two years later, mm-hmm. I started being able to like walk a lot better and, uh, I, I, I was able to, uh, hold on a conversation without getting on rabbit trails mm-hmm. and people would actually listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> um i i kind of calmed down like with my like outbursts mm-hmm. so and uh i want the audience to understand so governor snyder he leaves office at the end of 2018 uh governor whitmer comes in in 2019 uh january 2019 um and all of a sudden you know, Richard Baird, the governor's right-hand man, had facilitated this payment for you. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, don't talk to anyone about it. Don't talk to the media. So what happened when Governor Snyder left? Was it communicated to you that the treatment would stop? Yeah. Yeah, all treatment stopped. Mm-hmm. All treatment. And, and mind you, <laughs> the not only did that stop, but it also stopped me from getting... Um, prescriptions from Dr. Natsky because mm-hmm. the med- Medicaid wouldn't cover my prescriptions from a doctor that wasn't registered register with the state of Michigan. Mm-hmm. So I lost that too. So now I got to go to a doctor who doesn't practice medicine like he does and to get blood, blood work done because there's certain ways they, that, that environmental doctors test your blood from what regular, you know, family Medicaid doctors do testing. They haven't got a clue. Right. They haven't got a clue because I mean, I you know, having having blood work done is is it's important if it's done properly. Which I found that out. They did a full blown heavy metal test on me just through doing blood, and they never found anything. So if you take that to a doctor, you ain't got nothing. Right. You have to you see a specific you doctor. Do the, yeah, you got to do the urine analysis. You mm. got to. You got to take DMSA. You got to take a, an oral chelator to to grab a hold of those heavy metals, and you got to test right. You can't just go and prick some little kid's finger and say, "Oh, well, you're you got a three when you get really got like a twenty or right. or a nineteen. You know, you, you got to like you become your own doctor in, in a sense, right? You know, like like I I kind of became my own doctor. 
You know, that's something I've heard from a lot of Flint residents because they weren't getting that help. They've had to do the research. They've had to become the experts on lead and bacteria and TTHMs and so many other chemicals that were in that water that the media was not even talking about. Right. Right. Yeah. And of course, and, and then, and then Mark Edwards and, and, and the doctor, Mona, Hannah, Atisha gets, gets a, a reward, you know, but you ain't got, you know, my doctor who's saving lives every day, 40 plus years of saving lives and proven that, that chelation works. It's proven. It's been used since the forties. Mm -hmm. But of course, big pharma doesn't want that. They don't want, they don't want anybody getting better. They want people to just, you know, live on medication. And Adam, can I ask you, because there was more than just that one meeting with Richard Baird in, in your living room where he offered for the state to pay for the treatment which, by the way, my reporting indicates he told other people that he was paying for it, which is not true. Uh, he was he was not paying for it out of his pocket. Uh, it was. Dude, I don't know. I don't. I don't know any of that. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm just telling you. He actually other residents we spoke to, Governor Snyder's right hand man had told that. Oh no, I'm paying for it out of my pocket. Is you know I'm a I'm out of kindness for for Adam. Uh, well, I saw the text messages and the emails that confirmed the state was paying for it. But what I wanted to ask you is it seems like there was other, I guess, ways for the state to, um, in my view, kind of keep you happy. They had invited you and your wife at the time to go tour the uh, oh, yeah. state environmental <laughs> department's offices. Yeah, which, that was a joke. Yeah, that could you describe that? You got an dude, invitation. Wow. They, they purchased this piece of equipment for $150,000 and it would test everything on the periodic table, everything. So my question to the water lab, um, why aren't you testing everything in the water for everything? And the guy goes, well, that would take 10 years, maybe longer to change the laws. And the laws only say we got to test for lead and copper. Well, if, if all you're testing for is lead and copper, then you ain't going to know what's in your water. All you're going to know is lead and copper is in your water. But if they're testing for everything on the periodic table, they get a baseline. That baseline tells them what, you know, what the numbers are for what particular heavy metals. I mean, if you knew jet fuel was in your water, would you be bathing in it? Probably not. Right. Yeah. No, not not yet, bud. Hold on. Um, I guess I, I guess I brought up that because again, uh, and this you wouldn't know anything about, but it, it does seem, based on my reporting, that when Richard Baird kind of saw something that might be a, a threat to Governor Snyder, let's say yeah. a rowdy Flint resident who's sick and you know causing a ruckus at a town hall and getting media attention. It seems like according to residents I've spoke to, he, he tried to, you know, make nice with them, so to speak, uh, offer you treatment that he wasn't offering other people. I don't blame you for taking it by the way. And, but then there was more like, well, you know, let me pass them off to these people and let's invite them and his ex-wife, uh, his wife at the time to tour the environmental lab. And you were given a tour, not by, just environmental people, but this Scott Hippica, who was a former Army National Guard, it seems like to me, if it were me, I might feel like a little intimidated. Like, why is there, why is there like a former Black Ops Marine giving me a tour of a of a? Yeah, that part was weird. That that part to me was weird, and I I did get a little loud in there. I remember that the guy was like ready to take me out in the back, like you know, like it just seemed kind of like. Like he, like he was behind me kind of close mm -hmm. as I was questioning this guy who was in charge of the water plant. I can't remember his name, George, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, to me is like, like I, I didn't understand why this military guy was like in there giving me a tour of the lab. Like you think it would, like I invited Scott Smith because I thought, you know, Scott Smith's credible. He's, you know, 
Mm -hmm. could have been in testing my water had I not known like what was in my water I wouldn't know what to do for my kid for my family and did you find it strange that the governor's right hand man brought this military guy to the original meeting to stand next to him along with a state trooper and these other people I guess I didn't think anything of it I just thought that's what they do okay. maybe it was a because your ex-wife described it to us that when he introduced when he introduced himself, he said uh, something to the something like you know I'm here to do anything Rich Baird wants, including pick up his dog doo doo. Yeah, that was his. Yeah, he, I think he was. Yeah, like wipe his butt, get his coffee for him. You know, <laughs> his Sunday paper, whatever. I'm just trying to set the scene for the viewers here. You pop off at this town hall. You're removed. <laughs> The, the officer then connects you with basically the governor's top person, his right-hand right. man. A couple weeks later, they're in your living room offering you this treatment, which I think most viewers would understand. You're sick. Your family's sick. Uh, a lot of them would accept it. Um, yeah. And they described it to you in a way like, yeah, if, if it works for you, we'll, we'll offer it to other people. I think both you and Christina uh, at the time really felt that they're trying to do good here. Um, right. But it does seem strange that, you know, almost like a show of force uh, and then tell with all these people around them, including military people and state troopers, when they're also telling you at the same time, Shh, don't tell anyone about this. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's going to any mainstream media or anything like that. Right. And uh, let me ask you, because our reporting indicates uh, the story we just broke, that Governor Snyder was warned about the the dangers of the flint river a year before the actual switch he was briefed on it including the bacterial risks uh the risks of uh carcinogens and mm -hmm. the switch was allowed to move forward uh and we also found out that you know his right hand man richard baird uh it wasn't just you that was offered these kind of special deals just for you uh, it was other people too we also learned that you know early on in, in 2014 in october uh, six months after the water switch, while there was still time uh, at that point to, to make a switch back to Detroit's water, that uh, Richard Baird allegedly basically silenced somebody in the administration who was begging them to, to switch Flint back to Detroit because of the E. coli that was found and the TTHMs that were found in the water. Does, 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 looking back now, does, does this kind of, the man that stood in your living room that told you these things, does that seem like somebody who would silence a, a whistleblower who would do these things? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I believe that. I, I believe it now because <laughs> I'm still, I'm still waiting for their promise that they made and <laughs> I'm still waiting for them to completely let the city know that, Hey, this is a, an option. It mm -hmm. actually says in their, in their policy book that if you're at a certain level, lead level, that that's part of what they recommend is chelation. <clears throat> and so, you know, waiting for, for somebody sick in the city of Flint for their numbers to drop, you know, nobody's going to know what their numbers are now. You know, no, nobody's going to know what, you know, unless they have a urine analysis or they have the right kind of uh, medical help. Mm -hmm. You get a specialist. You don't go see like this is the way. This is the way I like to put it. You don't go see a brain. You don't go see a family doctor for brain surgery. Right. You go see a brain surgeon. <coughs> you know, you go see a neurologist if you're having, you know, neurological issues. Right. So you don't just go see anybody. Right. It's a Medicaid doctor who doesn't really have the expertise in environmental medicine. That's what we're given. Right. You take my, my, I mean, I had good insurance. I, I like to say I had good insurance, but decent insurance, but not anymore. Now I'm begging, I'm begging for crumbs. Right. You know, I'm, I'm living in my parents' basement at the age of 40. And I, I can't, you know, it's like, what do they expect me to do? I can't even get disability because what? Because because you got poisoned by the Flint water, so they're corrupt too. Like their their judges are corrupt too. Like they can't see that my 
my urine analysis was like evidence. It's science. It's like you can't, you can't, you can't like pull this out of your butt. This is like evidence. Like I have, I have several health conditions because of the Flint water. And I want the audience to understand, uh, sorry to have to bring this up, but I mean, your children have been affected. Yeah. They, I mean, they're all cognitive impaired. Like they all have like problems reading, writing and, and, you know, math. And you, you got to kind of have that stuff to, to be able to function in society. Right. You got to have the ability to write and you got to be able you know, have the ability to read. Right. And if you don't have that, you know, I, I just want to, I just want to end with, it's sick. I just want to end with this. I want the audience to understand you were a Flint resident that spoke up at a town hall in 2017 when the media was still kind of covering Flint. They're, they haven't been anymore, but, yeah. and you were removed for, for basically screaming at the government for not helping you and the other residents. A couple of weeks after that, the governor's right hand man who told you and your ex wife were best friends, showed up in your living room, offered you state funded medical treatment that they would pay for. They told you uh, and your wife, ex wife, uh, it would be made available for her too when she was done breastfeeding, yep. which, which never happened. Never happened. They also said, if you get better, mm -hmm. if your lead levels go down, we're going to make it available to the rest of Flint. Yeah. He said to you, your words, uh, you're going to be my lead poster child. Yeah. Um, the treatment has helped you significantly. Yes. yes. Once Governor Snyder left office and Richard Baird left office, his right-hand man, the treatment stopped from the state. They stopped paying for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you were told, and your ex-wife was told, don't go to the media and don't tell people that we're paying for this. Yeah. Um, and... To your knowledge, it was never made available to other Flint residents. Not to my knowledge. And you, at 40 years old, had this treatment cut off from you by the state. Uh, and you're saying, because I'm not a doctor, but it did help you and it could have helped other Flint residents if they would have made it available. Yeah. <laughs> and my understanding is the treatment, there were opportunities, environmental doctors willing to do it for yeah. other Flint, resident, Flint residents for, I believe, like, I don't know, $100,000 or $150,000? Yeah, that, that I'm not sure. Okay. I just know off the top of my head, there's a study that my doctor is willing to do. He's got it put together. He just needs the funding to do it. Gotcha. And that was, you know. <laughs> and what do you, uh, what do you want people to know, like, six years later after this water switch and what you've been through, what your family's been through, what your friends, what other Flint residents are still going through. You know, they they said the water's back to normal. They said that two years ago. It's I, not normal. It's not normal. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. It's uh, it's still nasty and bitter and tastes like you're drinking aspirin. From what I from the information I got. Okay. It's still it's still bad. You, you can't. There's there. Changing some service lines isn't going to fix the problem. You got to do all of them. You got to get all the mains out. I mean, I'm not a, prof I'm not like, like I said, I'm not the smartest guy, but I think common sense says running some arthrophosphate and coating a pipe is not fixing this problem. And just to let you know that that phosphate isn't safe either. You can't consume this arthrophosphate or bathe in it, according to the CDC. So, so they're 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 telling people to shower in that crap. Where's the bathing standards? We have none. Right. We have no bathing standards. But we're gonna tell somebody that we tested your water for lead and copper. They don't even talk about the copper anymore. They just talk about lead. Right. They don't. They got to talk about it all. They they have the equipment. They bought it. They bought it just for Flint. The MDQ bought that piece of equipment just for Flint, just for the water crisis. But they're not using it to its full potential. 
And that's our tax dollars that paid for it. Hmm. Our tax dollars paid for a piece of equipment that was put there according, according to the MDEQ. It's there. It's, it's been there. But they ain't using it to a full potential. They got to change some, some laws. Ten years. That's what the guy said. It's going to take ten years to change the laws so we can test, test your water properly. Mm-hmm. That's baloney. It's baloney. And my last question to you is, uh, I'm just going to ask you straight up. I mean, I don't think you knowingly, you or your wife, ex-wife, knowingly took this money or took this funding, shall I say, for the treatment. No, I don't think either of you thought anything wrong was going on. I think you guys were told, manipulated into thinking, we're going to make this available to the rest of Flint if it works for you. Uh, Listen, man, when he said pilot, I just thought that's exactly what... I thought there's other pilots out there. Mm-hmm. I thought that's what this guy called it. I, I thought, hey, <laughs> he knows what he's doing. You know, he's the government. That that's literally what I thought. I thought he knows what he's doing. He's calling this a pilot, probably because there's other pilots out there. And but which I found out later on that there is no such thing as a pilot. Pilot program, yeah. Yeah, there's no such thing. He made he pulled it out of his butt. Well, I guess what I'm asking you is years later, because I want the audience to understand, I don't think that you did anything wrong. I don't think you or your ex-wife knowingly took money that you knew took excuse me, took treatment that you knew other people weren't gonna get. I didn't take any money. You're right, sorry. Took uh treatment that the state was paying for, not money. But I guess what I'm asking you, years later, do you look at it as Rich Baird was trying to basically pay you off and pay off other residents? Without, without, without him saying it, probably, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I would say that was a, I mean, I, I, I literally have been told that was hush. That was a hush fund. Mm-hmm. Told by who? By, by people, just everyone around me. Right. <laughs> it's just a hush fund. Right. It's like, it's just like some of these people who, you know, take a vaccine and and you don't hear about their story they get they get they get paid off right and uh the last thing i'll say i I just want viewers to understand i won't go into depth but you know adam and his ex-wife took a risk to go public with this you know it's not easy to speak out against the government whether that governor and his advisor is still in office or not it's still a risk you know it's scary to go forward. Uh, and even, even if nothing will happen to you, it's intimidating. And Adam took a risk and I appreciate that, Adam. I I know it's not easy. And if anybody, uh, if anybody, including attorneys, uh, try to punish you for that, you let me know and I will make that public and it will become national news because Flint residents should not be intimidated in my opinion, uh, Mm -hmm. from speaking, about what really happened and what, what, who really tried to help them and who really tried to silence them. And I well, thank you. believe, believe you me, man, I've been wanting, I've been wanting people to know about this since day one. I, I honestly want people to know what their options are. Can I get my child better? Do they need, I mean, they might need, you know, they, <coughs> they, they might need special help, but, what if, if you can get rid of the heavy metals, that's, that's, that's the icing on the cake. And if it's available, then, then people should have that option. People should have the knowledge. I mean, knowledge is, is key to this. Like you have to know what we're up against here. You right. have to know that, that chemicals and heavy metals and other whatever were, were involved. It wasn't just lead. And everybody just wants to talk about lead. What about the fluoride? Fluoride is horrible. Aspartame. I mean, we, you know, I had to really change what I changed my diet because now I have an autoimmune problem. I can't just eat anything. I have to like really be careful what I eat or it can impact my, my health. Right. And I, don't, I don't know if that'll ever get better. Hopefully. I'm, I mean, Treatment is the best option I feel I took. And I, I, I believe everyone should have that. Every single person, kid, child, you know, mother, father, whoever, 
everyone. The city of Flint needs needs this if they want it. Right. And they don't have to be as scared. They don't have to be scared of of the outcome. They don't have to do it. But if they want to do it, they should be given that op- opportunity. And and the fund, the funds, the rainy day fund that they had that that Governor Snyder had could have came from there. You know, it's raining. Do you think Governor Snyder or Richard Baer should be prosecuted? Oh, to the fullest. To the fullest. Yeah, of course. People are dying. People have died. If I poisoned you, I should be prosecuted to the fullest. Not brushed under the rug and say, oh, well, you're the government. Six years later, nobody's in prison. But someone who didn't pay a parking ticket goes to jail. You know, I, I, it's messed up. It's messed up. The, this world, this, this world we're living in is all messed up. The corruption, the corruption's got to go, and people got to be held held accountable. I mean, if you speed, you get pulled over. You get a ticket. You pay the ticket. You don't pay the ticket. You lose. You could lose your license. Thank you so much for speaking with us, and uh, I'm glad uh, that we're going to get the truth out. And I hope, um, you know, in my view, it doesn't matter if it happened six days ago or six years ago. Right. American citizens shouldn't be poisoned, and if they are poisoned, they should be made as whole as possible. You're never right. going to be fully made whole. Uh, the families who lost people are not going to be made whole. The children who have permanent brain damage are not going to be made completely whole. But people should be held accountable. And I also believe that the residents in Flint, you know, in this presidential debate, in this presidential year, we've had a debate on the Democratic side about Medicare for all. Well, explain to me why the residents of Flint don't have Medicare for all. Explain to me why the residents of Flint don't like are are clawing with their fingernails. We we should have we should have just as good of insurance as the best of them for what they did to us. For what they did to us, and then they're then they're charging people for for poison water, three hundred dollars a month for poison water. What what that, that to me just doesn't make doesn't add up. What you did to us, shoot, you should be paying my water bill, and you should be paying for a fil- filtration system so it doesn't po- continue to poison me. Because there is a filtration system in that house that I didn't pay for; somebody did, right. and it it you know. That that's a whole nother topic, but everybody should have these things, these these uh, these options. Everybody. Thank you, Adam. You're welcome. Take care. Yeah. God bless. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.